There was a meme going around that I saw quite a bit over the past few days regarding the Red Wings and their fans. When Steve Eiserman had himself a press conference interview segment with the media, there were a lot of Red Wings fans that I saw saying, Darn it, man, I am so much more excited for this Stevie Y press conference than I am for any of the playoff games or the playoff series or the playoffs in general because... You know, obviously, as a fan of the Red Wings, you know what exactly the context is behind the way this team has been assembled. They haven't been great the past few years, but if there is a guy that's going to go out there and fix everything, it's probably a better bet to say that that guy's going to be Stevie Y. He's smart, he can have a sharp tongue when he wants to, he can hold things back if he wants to, but ultimately, Steve Eiserman is a man with a plan, and the Red Wings fan base from yesteryear who was so accustomed to seeing him dominate the NHL while wearing the wing wheel, yeah, everybody's kind of aware of that. So, let's go over onto what Steve Eiserman said on his recent press conference talking about Jeff Blaschel, talking about the direction of the team. We're gonna go over a few tweets, we're gonna go over onto a Helene St. James article in the Detroit Free Press, and we'll make our conclusions as to what exactly it is the Red Wings could do. So, the big thing that was talked about on the press conference for Steve Eisman was actually Jeff Blaschel, the recently fired, well, not really fired, but let go, Detroit Red Wings head coach, who had been the second longest tenured head coach in the NHL behind John Cooper for a while now. It's actually kind of wild that he is the guy that was here for so long that he had that title, but nevertheless, we had ourselves Eiserman who did have some things to say about Jeff and the services he provided. There's a 58-second clip where Eiserman goes out there and talks about how much of a professional Jeff Blaschel is, how outstanding of a job he did leading the team, even though the team was in a pretty bad spot in terms of its roster construction. This is the sentence he actually used, pardon the expression, but he ran the program and this wasn't a complete blank show. And, I mean, honestly, Steve is right. Like, the Red Wings were really bad the past few seasons, and sure, Jeff Blaschel has been the guy behind that, and he has been the guy overseeing the team on the ice during this entire time. They've had bad years night in and night out. He's been the guy at the helm, but it could have been worse, right? We said this when Blaschel got let go and we made the video talking about how he was no longer going to be a part of the Red Wings, but... The guy tried, and the guy was a total professional about it. We saw some of the team testimonies, you know, the players on the team talking about Jeff Blaschel. There's another article going over talking about that, but pretty much everybody had good things to say about Blaschel, and it was very evident that this was a guy that was liked in the locker room, that had the belief of the players. It's just towards the end of 2021-2022, you could very much debate, okay, what the hell's going on with the Red Wings? Why are they not playing as well as they could be? Is this a Blaschel thing? Is this a team thing? Who really knows? But Iserman does say that it could have been worse. Blaschel ran the program while well. he did an outstanding job despite the circumstances. However, that does not mean that Iserman let go of Blaschel without a plan. This is the comment he made as to why this was the decision at this time. He says this, that the biggest reason why he made the change to move on from Blaschel is that the team was regressing again, on and off the puck. Now, I guess you could go out there and very accurately say that, yeah, the Red Wings towards the end of the year were not really playing with the same hype and swagger as they had at the beginning of the year. Sure, there was a big bump from the rookies, Cider and Raymond coming in here and doing what it was they were doing. It was fantastic to see just the rookie seasons and the dominance, the points, the defensive responsibility and all that from each of these two guys, Cider probably gonna get himself the Calder, who really knows, but, you know, I think it's kind of a foregone conclusion that he's gonna be the guy at the helm, so, yeah, hopefully that reigns true, right? I like Cider a lot, but regardless, he was a big part as to why the Red Wings had such a good bump at the beginning of the year. Now, they weren't a playoff contender by any means, but they did still win some games here and there, and there were a lot of feel-good moments on the team, a lot of goals where you're like, oh my goodness, what a passing play there, from Bertuzzi to Larkin to Raymond, oh, that's so nice to see. He had a ton of these little moments, and that's ultimately what I've been saying the Red Wings fanbase should be focusing on over the past few years. Sure, you're not playing the best hockey possible. You're not winning games night in, night out. You're not winning any president's trophies here or there. So if you're a fan of a rebuilding team, you just gotta go out there and expect the little things. Look at your rookies. Look at your younger guys. See what they're doing. See when they score a goal. Those are the moments that you cheer for and that you get excited for because in an 82-game season where your guys are gonna finish, like, bottom percent of the league, you have nothing else to go out there and be happy about. Aside from, of course, the prospects and development, but that's about it. The Red Wings had a lot more to be hopeful for at the beginning of the year, and as things went on, 
you saw the wear and tear of an 82 game season really start to affect this team. You saw the cohesion start to rip apart a little bit. And ultimately, the Wings finished off 2022 with a pretty okay record. I mean, they weren't dead last again, which is good to see. They're in the, what is it? Let's go to Tankathon right now because I don't know off the top of my head. The Red Wings were eighth last in the league, which was a pretty good number, honestly. Like, all things considered, they were only two points behind Anaheim, three points behind San Jose. If you're in the same territory as those teams, I think you're doing a pretty good job. Certainly not in the dead last by a long shot territory they were back in 2019-20. But the quote from Iserman reigns true. We're going over onto an article on the Detroit Free Press from Helene St. James to look at a bigger point from the quotes over here. Ultimately, to take that decision, I felt our team fundamentally that we kind of, I don't know if plateaued is the right word, but we got into a point where fundamentally, with and without the puck, we regressed. We're at a point now where I felt, okay, I've got to see if bringing in a new coach and a new coaching staff can make a difference to get us back and get us going in the right direction. Eisenman also said that Jeff Blaschel is a good hockey coach. He ran a really good program. I can certainly attest to our program for the last three years because it's been dictated by me. Under the circumstance where I'm trying to rebuild this team, I say this sincerely, Jeff did an outstanding job leading this team, this organization, in a very, very difficult circumstance. And so, going over to what Eiserman says about the future of the Red Wings and their coaching staff, there are two tweets that I think kind of mirror each other in a pretty funny way. Eiserman, revealing what he says is a little too much, says, I find it difficult to hire people that you don't really know, that you haven't really worked with, or someone that you've worked closely with and knows the way I want things done. He also said this, I'm trying to say as much as possible while actually saying nothing, if you haven't figured that out. Sounds like me and my YouTube videos, to be honest, but either way, Steve Eiserman hinting that there could be some sort of a search for somebody that he himself is familiar with kind of opens the door a tad more, I guess you could say, to a few other names that have sort of been entering the pot. I've been getting DMs asking about Igor Larionov and his overall coaching tenure that he has had in Russia. I know he was the coach of the Russian junior team. I didn't really think he did a good job, but Igor Larionov was announced a few days ago to being the new hockey coach in Torpedo of the KHL, so... There you go. I don't really know if he's actually going to head over to Detroit anymore, but that indeed was a name that I've been asked to talk about as well. And if you want to talk about Iserman knowing a guy and being familiar with his abilities, I guess Igor might be that guy. But still, I'd seen some people talking about assistant coaches in the Tampa Bay organization. I don't really know if there's any merit to that. But of course, you know, Iserman was with Tampa Bay for an extended amount of time and John Cooper was there too. So he's probably very familiar with the systems they're running over there. We also had this article published on MLive.com a few days ago too. The Red Wings might seek a coach with an edge to push players. And of course, the photograph on the article is of John Tortorella. So... Ha! Huh. Okay, I mean, we've got about two minutes left in this commentary, so I don't really want to dive into the entire Tortorella experiment just yet. There obviously, of course, is Ricard Grongborg as well, who is kind of touted as one of the better international coaches in hockey, so the Red Wings being in search of a new guy, having Iserman at the helm of that search kind of says that we'll probably get somebody good. And I think I just took the entire eight and a half minutes to explain that point right there, that yes... No matter who the heck it is Eiserman hires, you know it's probably going to be a decision that Red Wings fans adore because Steve Eiserman can do no wrong, and there's nothing really that he has done so far to say that he has done wrong. So all you got to do, trust in the Eiser plan. It's clear that he can adjust the plan as he wants on the fly because when Jeff Blaschel started to regress under the team, or excuse me, when the team started to regress under Jeff Blaschel, that's when Blaschel got the can, even though he did do, in Eiserman's words, a very good job in making sure the Red Wings did not turn into an absolute blank show. So let me know in the comments all your thoughts about the Red Wings and their potential coaching options for next season. We didn't even highlight in this video just the opinions that the players had for Jeff Blaschel and their closing comments as he departed the organization. There's an article about that somewhere, I forgot where it was, but it was very apparent that despite the media and the fan perspective, Jeff Blaschel was a guy that was loved by his players, so it's good to see them have that kind of relationship with the guy, it's just unfortunately, Iserman is kind of right, they did regress under Blaschel towards the end. So we've got no choice but to sit here speculating who is going to be part of the new coaching staff down the line. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 9 and bye.